right, English teacher friends. So Christian Kuhn, the Bob Ross of Composition, coming at you again for another writing workshop. And today, I'm going to kill a few birds with uh, one stone. So first, it's Thanksgiving time. So I thought I would tackle Dave Barry's Turkeys in the Kitchen. Great, great piece, rife with rhetorical appeals. And then uh, my students are really struggling to write introductory paragraphs for the purposes of rhetorical analysis. I do things very different than the college board. I begin my academic year with argument because I think it's the easiest. And then I move to synthesis and then I move to rhetorical analysis. So here we are at the beginning of November, the middle of November. I'm just getting started with rhetorical analysis. So my students are neophytes with it. And uh, we're a couple of essays in, and I'm noticing a mighty struggle to get uh, everything good in the hood as far as getting the thesis point in the introductory paragraph. So what I'm going to do is run through turkeys in the kitchen, and I'm going to Bob Ross how to do the introduction three times, right? I always model three times for my students using my declarative thesis heuristic. So if you would please be kind. If you enjoy this video, find it to be edifying, please hit like and please subscribe. So I'm always talking about Bob Rossing instruction. Let me talk what I tell you what I mean by that. So there's a seismic difference between the assigning of writing and the direct explicit teaching of it. So imagine Bob Ross comes on to the joy of painting and he says, all right, we're going to do a painting. And then he says, peace out, deuces. Here's a graphic organizer. You're on your own. We wouldn't be very good painters if he taught that way. And the likewise goes for our students. If we assign, they're not going to become good writers. You know, it's, it's kind of wishful thinking. So we as teachers need to hit them with heuristics, just as Bob Ross did in, in, in The Joy of Painting. He used the wet on wet technique. And for my introductory paragraphs for rhetorical analysis, I only use the declarative thesis. So I encourage teachers, get up to that easel, start with a blank canvas, and paint with your students, with and for them, so that it demystifies how to do this. So the first question we got to ask ourselves is this. So how do I write the introductory paragraph? And I've alluded to this. We're going to go declaratively. And in order to do that, students have to answer two questions. What is the author's intent? And how does the author construct meaning in the work as a whole? And if we go back to like the 1970s and look at college board prompts, the prompts implicitly pose these two questions, regardless of whatever language they use to cloak and house the, um, the prompt. So what my students are going to do is this. It's a three plus one model. So the introduction is always four sentences. They're going to take three sentences to answer the question, how does the author construct meaning? And let me back up a couple of steps on that. When students answer that particular question, how does the author construct meaning, they are ultimately articulating the thesis statement. So they got three sentences to do that. And then one sentence, what is the author's intent? Some teachers talk about universal truth, exigence, universal theme. It really does not matter however you want to cloak that. So if we look at it visually, it's kind of like a triangle. And you begin with the thesis. From there, you sprinkle in a little bit of context and background. Don't regurgitate everything that Dave Barry does. You're not writing a cliff note summation. Just the highlights. Sprinkle in some tier two level vocabulary because this is an academic task. So I want my students to cop a certain academic tone. And by tier two, I simply mean your average run-of-the-mill SAT level caliber words. So I run intensive word study academies throughout the academic year. And my students really augment their vocabulary exponentially over time with me in my classroom. And uh, it begins to reflect in their writing quite nicely. Sentence constructs, I'm a stickler about this. And those that follow my YouTube channel know that uh, 
I use Strunk and White's Write It Right as a seminal text in my classroom. And in that text, they have something called rule number 18. And rule number 18 suggests that there's 12 different ways to cobble together a single sentence. But in addition to that, there's a book called The Artist Styling Sentences, 20 Patterns of Four Success, third edition. And they say that there's 20 patterns. So there's 20 types, but you can pattern those types 20 different ways and 20 different patterns. So three plus one equals four sentences. My students always write four sentences for their introductions. And that's it. Three plus one. Three, construction of meaning. One, authorial intent. So for this Dave Berry piece, let's take a look at exemplar number one. I'm going to start with what I deem to be the most salient, germane, relevant rhetorical terms, devices, techniques. Usually I drop like three of them in the introduction because I got three sentences. If it's a really juicy piece, I'll slip a fourth in there. But for this one, I just went with three. And then I'm going to poke in one sentence about authorial intent. So look at this. Highlighting the prescriptive inanity of the Thanksgiving holiday, Barry explores the human science that separates us along gender lines. And I think that's the whole thing. Like, that's the exigence. With humor, he carves the proverbial turkey of man's ineptitude in the kitchen, as well as man's psychological sluggardness on such days. So you can see here, I'm, I'm into the ethos, I'm into the logos, right? I'm into the tone, the humor of it, the characterization. Drawing a stark contrast, right? So maybe that's code for juxtaposition. So drawing a stark contrast between men and women along traditional gender roles, he proves man's inferior state of being. On a national day in which gratitude is practiced and exercised, Men can do little more than hang their collective heads in shame, right? Men aren't doing what they need to do on Thanksgiving Day, according to Barry. And that would be a whole introduction. You can see four sentences. Vocab is up. Sentence structures. One of the big things I tell my students is don't parallel your sentences. And if, you know, struggling emerging students tend to parallel independent clauses and short, simple declarative. You can see in my writing, there's no parallel syntax at all. Usually there's no place for that in the introduction. And if it's there, it's usually because the kid's struggling uh, with their voice, their rhythm, and their flow. So one time is never enough. It's kind of confusing. It might be a little nebulous. So let's try that again and look at exemplar number two. Again, I'm going to go with the three plus one declarative heuristic. Without much introspection or questioning, Barry suggests that both men and women blindly adhere to the prescribed roles they've been societally assigned, especially on holidays such as Thanksgiving. That's the logos, right? That's the whole thing. Look where I go next with humor, right? So I'm at the tone, I'm at the, you know, the ethos and a few syntactical flares. He presents his scientific findings to deduce a simple, a single thing. Man's fumbling and bumbling nature. As a culture, Barry wonders why Americans have an unshakable allegiance to our prescribed gender roles and various other tacit understandings. And then usually my last sentence is the authorial intent sentence. Look how I do that. Even though Barry's data sample is small, it is clear that the average American male has the brain mass of an average Thanksgiving turkey. All right. So he's making fun of men in this. We don't do enough, right? We just kind of look around stupid and say stupid things and do stupid things on Thanksgiving while women take care of everything. So like I said, I always model things three times for my students. So I'll do that for you. Here is my attempt number three at a blank canvas. Self-mockingly, Barry readily admits that he ha he too has bought into the role of accepting man's culturally constructed groupthink hinging upon the tenets of stupidity and short-sightedness. Combining terms, devices, techniques there. And I like implication. Like sometimes I'll explicitly state the term if I feel it's necessary. But if the implication's strong enough, I roll that way. 
A holiday intended to make space for one's gratitude, Bury is anything but thankful to be a man. Playing upon stereotypical gender roles, he notes the stark and ironic differences between men and women. Belittling and self-deprecating, his scientific postulations reveal one truth. Man is a pretty stupid creature, All right? So that is the whole kit and caboodle, if you will. So I'd pause here, have your students try their hand at their own introduction, perhaps host a writing workshop in which students are sharing work. I'm a firm believer that the more writing students see, especially of their peers, the better they become. And even better than that, teacher, write a couple yourself to really demystify it for them. All right, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, give me an email at teachingwritingcoach at gmail.com. I am a lead teacher for the National Writing Project and present often with NCTE. So I have a web page, www.teachinghowtowrite, and you can see my comings and goings and all the PD offerings that are going on throughout the calendar year. That's it from me. Happy teaching, happy writing.